Now, I would like to explain about the topic optoelectronics. Under the heading of optoelectronics, the contents are Introduction to optoelectronics, Carrier generation mechanisms, Carrier recombination mechanisms, LED, Solar cell, PI and diode, and avalanche photodiode. Now, what is optoelectronics? Optoelectronics, it is the communication between optics and electronics that will be including uh, the study design and manufacture of a hardware device which is going to convert the light energy into electrical energy and electrical energy into light energy through semiconductors so the optoelectronic devices are leds semiconductor laser diodes photodiodes like pi and diode and avalanche photodiode and solar cells next before we study about these optoelectronic devices we'll be seeing the carrier generation mechanisms and carrier recombination mechanisms which are involved in these optoelectronic devices. What is carrier generation? Carrier generation is a process in which an electron hole pair are created and this electron hole pair is created by absorbing some energy. The electron will be moving from valence band into the conduction band thereby creating one electron hole pair. The next is the recombination process. Carrier recombination process is a process in which conduction band electron loses its energy and reoccupies the energy state of a hole in the valence band. So if the energy is released in the form of photons then such recombination process we call it as the radiative recombination process. While during the recombination process, if the energy is released in the form of phonons, then such a recombination process is called as non-radiative recombination process. Coming to the carrier generation mechanisms, we are going to study about three carrier generation mechanisms. The first one is the carrier generation due to light absorption. So in this carrier generation due to light absorption, the photon energy is absorbed by an electron which will be present in the valence band. We can see here in the diagram, photon is being uh, incident and the electron is going to absorb this energy and it is being lifted from the valence band to the conduction band. So the electron will be in the conduction band leaving behind a hole in the valence band. Corresponding to an electron in the conduction band will be having a hole in the valence band. So we'll be having one electron hole pair created. So this electron hole pair is created by absorption of the photon energy. So this is called as a carrier generation due to light absorption. Now we can see here in this diagram the photon energy which is given as EPH should be greater than the band gap energy. The gap between the, the energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band. We call it as a band energy gap. So this photon energy should be greater than the band energy gap. Yeah. Then the electron will be moving from the, by absorbing the photon energy, the electron will be moving from the valence band into the conduction band. So we'll be having one electron in the conduction band. Correspondingly, we'll be having one hole in the valence band. The next carrier generation mechanism is due to ionization due to high energy beam. So this high energy beam is going to consist of charged particles which will be having much higher energy than the band gap energy so that multiple electron hole pairs will be created in this process and this we can see here high energy beam consisting of charged particles now the electrons will be absorbing this energy and they will be moving from the valence band into the conduction band so instead of a single electron hole pair we can see here we have multiple electron hole pairs the third carrier generation process is the impact ionization process an electron with an energy which is much larger than the conduction band energy will be giving off its energy to generate an electron hole pair to a band to band transition. Now here we can see here this electron will be resulting in an, in an electron hole pair. Now this uh, generation process it will be causing the avalanche multiplication process in semiconductor diodes which will be connected in high reverse bias. So under the high reverse bias the electron which is going to accelerate in the electric field that is going to gain the energy and this kinetic energy of the electron is given off to an electron 
electron in the valence band creating an electron hole pair so these resulting two electrons will be creating two more electrons which in turn will be uh, generating four more electrons and an avalanche multiplication of this electrons will be created so this will be called as the avalanche effect so we can see here in the diagram the impact ionization of electrons and holes we have uh, an electron which will be creating an electron hole pair so we'll be having two electrons here which will be creating four electrons these four electrons will be creating eight electrons avalanche multiplication of this charge carriers will be taking place so this is called impact ionization carrier recombination process again in this carrier recombination mechanisms we have three methods the first one is the band to band recombination in this band to band recombination the electron will be moving from the conduction band to the valence band and it is going to recombine with a hole in the valence band this band to band transition is a radiative transition which will be occurring in direct band gap semiconductor so we can see here in this diagram an electron from the conduction band it will be falling into the hole and the valence band and the recombination will be taking place so in this process the energy will be released by the electron which is equivalent to the band gap energy the next process is a trap assisted recombination or shockley reed hall recombination so this recombination will be occurring when an electron in the conduction band in the first step it will be falling into a trap this trap energy level is caused because of the structural defect or because of the presence of a foreign atom so in the first step the electron from the conduction band it will be falling into the trap and in the second step the electron from the trap it will be falling into the valence band thereby combining with the hole in the valence band thereby completing the recombination process so this is called as a trap assisted recombination combination the third recombination process is the auger recombination an electron in the conduction band will be recombining with the hole in the valence band and that energy which will be given off that is given off to an electron in the conduction band so this is called as auger recombination so these are the carrier generation and carrier recombination mechanisms